So we are just talking about resistivity, and so resistivity is how much material resists the flow of electrons, and that resistivity is going to depend on the material. So copper is going to have a very low resistivity, and glass is going to have an extremely high resistivity. And so the resistance Oh, we got a lot of stuff packed in there. The resistance measured in ohms is going to be R is going to be the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. And its units are going to be uh, ohms per meter. And so L is going to be the length of the electric path we'll just call it a wire and A is the cross-sectional area So if I've got um, two wires, well, so suppose I got a few different wires. Wire one. So its length is uh, its length is 15 centimeters. And its diameter is uh, diameter is four millimeters. And then we got wire two. And it's got a length of nine centimeters and a diameter of four millimeters. Well, this one is going to have less resistance because the electricity has less material that the electrons have less material that it has to travel through, so less bumping into atoms. Here there's more bumping into atoms, so there's more resistance. And they're the same diameter, so that's okay. Now we've got uh, we've got a length of length of twenty two meters, length of twenty two centimeters, and eight millimeters and a diameter of eight millimeters but the problem is is that we don't care about diameter okay we don't care about diameter so if I looked at this end on 
it's like that. If I looked at this end on, it's like that. If I looked at this end on, it's like that. Now, area one, area two, area two is four times area one. So wire three, wire three is longest but most area so least resistance even though this wire is longer it's got four times more area than any of these things so it's twice as long as this wire. It's more than twice as long as this wire, but it's got four times as much area. So if I go up to that equation, yeah, I'm plugging in something that's like two times as much up here, but I'm plugging in something that's four times as much down here. So, fatter wires are going to have lower resistance, thinner wires are going to have more resistance, so light bulbs have really, really, really thin wires if you're still using incandescent light bulbs. Okay, so then um, the last equation that I just want to throw out here is we have V equals I R. And so V is the voltage measured in volts. I is the current measured in amps. And R is the resistance measured in ohms. And then remember that I is change in Q over change in T. So, so I is also coulombs per second. And, and uh, we just kind of, we're going to spend a lot of time in chapter 18 talking about these concepts. Uh, so I think that I'm just going to go through real quickly and say um, just a simple problem is if I said, uh, well, what did I have? Um, if I had 3.3.3 amps, okay, um, my, I'm going to go back to my uh, light bulb and capacitor. So going back up here, I have my light bulb and my capacitor, and we said that Here's my light bulb. And we said that the voltage was 16.4 volts. And we said that the current was 3.3 amps. So we're going to say that the resistance of my light bulb was going to be 16.4 volts divided by 3.3 amps. five ohms. So now we've sort of just sort of completed this idea where I've got a capacitor that has a capacitance that I found and it has a certain voltage on it. I hook it up to a light bulb. It discharges in a certain amount of time that lights the light bulb and we had some wattage with the light bulb as well. Um, I'm going to talk about that in the next video. And I think I'm just going to put this whole thing together in the next video.